much. What a blessing. I want us to turn in the book of Romans this morning. We're going to go from the book of Romans to Philippians chapter 2. But um, this morning, we've been singing a whole lot about the truth of God's Word. And that's really what I want our focus to be on this morning. Folks, no matter if it's from the pastor's palace message to you can't judge a book by its cover, when you look at the Word of God, particularly the one that I've got holding my hand, you think, well, that's a pretty bland color. Folks, it's not a matter of what the cover is all about. It matters what's on the inside. And that is the Word of God uh, that He has given us uh, to live our lives by. When Brother Eric sang, as he led us in blessed assurance, I thought to myself, how can we have assurance? We have it from the Word of God. These things have I written that you may know that you have eternal life. In the book of 1 John, tells us. But if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 1. And I want to read beginning in verse 14. And then we're going to flip over to Philippians chapter 2. And begin reading in verse 14. In a world in which we live, the Word of God means nothing. Now, when I mean means nothing in this world, I mean, as it, unless it pertains to the Christian faith, this world cares nothing about what the Bible says. It does not put stock in anything that the Bible says. And obviously we know that because we see what's going on today around us. We see people that say, you know what, I don't care what the Word of God says. What I want to do is I want to live my life the way I want to live it. I want to live my lifestyle the way that I want to live it. And I don't care who I'm imposing on or not imposing on. And so Romans chapter 12, I mean chapter 1, beginning in verse 14, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says this, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and the unwise, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, <laughs> the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like an incorruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up unto uncleanliness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And then I want to finish in verse 5. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. That is, the creation more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. They worshiped and served the, create, the uh, creature or the creation rather than the Creator. They don't care what the Word of God says. It is useless to them. They don't care what it says. They're not going to live by what the Word of God says. They change the truth of God into a lie. They want to live the way they want to live. And they don't want to read the Word of God. They don't want to heed the Word of God because it's contrary to their lifestyle. Folks, here is our standard. I'm telling you, when you see things going on around us in the news and news media and all this, and you see what even the Supreme Court is considering right now, and you think, how in the world have we gotten to the point where we're not believing the Bible as a nation, we're not trusting in the Word of God, we put the Word of God aside, and may God help us as a nation. May God help us as a nation to turn back to Him. Philippians chapter 2. 
verses 14 through 16. And we're going to talk about the importance of the Word of God today. As you're turning there, if you remember what Haley said, all the way from the book of Genesis, all the way to the book of Revelation, it's all about Jesus. It's all about His creation. It's all about His death and burial and resurrection. The whole book is talking about Christ. Notice what verse 14 in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke. And notice what it said. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Wow. Is that not talking about America today? Perverse, crooked nation in whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither have labored in vain. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. 1 Thessalonians chapter 15, verse 58. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Folks, there's one thing I know we've got to do today. No matter what our society tells us is right and wrong, we have to stand on this book. We have got to stand on the truth of God's Word because this is the only standard that we have that God has given us. And if we cannot abide by what God has told us to do, then we're in trouble. Folks, and I'm not talking about us just as a church. I'm talking about us as a nation. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer and then we're going to have a message about the importance of the Word of God this morning. Father, as we come into Your presence and we think about Your Word, oh God, how precious it is. And Lord, how we take it for granted. God, forgive us. Lord, as we think about where a nation has come today, God, it's the greatest nation on the face of the earth. I believe that. But God, how far we've come from your truth. Lord, we're, we're worshiping and serving the creature more than the creator. God, the word of God means nothing to this nation anymore. Because if it did, we'd be standing on the truths that are written therein. God, my heart is burdened. And Lord, I know the Bible says that as your coming is near, that these things are going to happen. These things are going to get worse and worse. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And God, we know that things are going to continue to get worse. But God, help us today to be faithful, to hold forth, to hold forth, forth, God. To stand on His truth. There's nothing else that is worth standing on. So God, help us today to see the importance of Your Word. And I know, God, I'm preaching to people who name the name of Christ. But God, somehow, some way, even much more as we see the day approaching... God, that we would be an encouragement to one another. And Lord, that we would read the Word and study the Word and apply the Word to our lives and live in a way that we can stand before You and hear You say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. God, we need You today more than we ever have. God, I pray that You would help us to be defenders of the truth. Lord, to hold up your word in a way that people would be drawn, that would see the light of Jesus Christ in us, not just by what we say, but the way that we live out our faith, according to your word, according to your truth. Lord, the Bible tells of itself that it is sharp, it's powerful. Lord, it pierces the very depths of our soul. And Lord, I know that when the Word of God is put forth, that it hurts people and sometimes they lash back because they don't like what it says. God, I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you, faithful to proclaim your Word wherever we're at, unashamedly. As Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
God, I'm so thankful this morning I can stand in front of your congregation, your people, and say that the Word of God, that salvation is for everyone. It is not for a select few. Lord, I know that your Word tells us that you call many, but there are only a few, Lord, that are going to receive it. But God, help us to be faithful. No matter if it is a few, help us to be faithful, putting the Word of God forth and allowing you, as we plant and sow, God, you give the increase. So God, help us today to recognize the importance of your Word and the importance of living it out. Bless this time together we have around your Word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you think about the introduction... It's very interesting how that Paul starts the first verses, the first three verses. He begins talking about our relationship as a body of Christ. And he begins talking about this thing about unity and harmony. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning about how the importance of being in unity and harmony together in Christ because Satan would desire to have to sift us as wheat is what he told one of the apostles. Listen, folks, not just as individuals, but as a church, God would, or not God, but Satan would have us divided so that we cannot be effective in being what God wants us to be and holding uh, the Word of God and putting it forward and putting it forth in our communities and so forth. And so it's important to remember that we are to be in unity and harmony together. Why? Because Paul understood that if you can't get along with each other, there's no way that we can be this light that Paul is talking about. There's no way that we can do this. If we're not willing to practice love and forgiveness, how in the world are we going to be able to get the message of love and forgiveness to those who need to hear the truth of this book? How are we going to do that? Folks, do not let your life be a stumbling block. Do not let your life be a stumbling block to others receiving the Word of God and being saved. Do not let that happen. Let Live your life in a way that you will exemplify what the Word of God says. Live in that way. People expect the world to be divisioned and to have disputes and to have quarrels and all these things. Why don't we, and by the way, it's high time that we show them what it means uh, to be a follower of Christ, what it's really all about. And folks, it's all about letting our light shine so that they may see our good works, but not because of that, but it's to ultimately glorify our Father which is in heaven. It's already been shared this morning. Living our life in a way that people would see the difference in our life and would bring honor and glory to the Lord. But you know what, folks? It starts with our example, but it doesn't stop there. The Bible talks about in this chapter that we are to hold forth the Word of God. We are to proclaim the truth of His Word that we're not to be ashamed. Romans chapter 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Folks, do you believe that Jesus is the only way of salvation? Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Can I hear it? Amen. Do you believe that? Then why in the world are we not holding forth the Word of God? Why are we not proclaiming the truth that Jesus is the only way, that the gospel is the power of God to salvation? Why don't we do that? We ought to. That's what God would have us to do. Why is the Word of God so important today? Why is it so important? Why is it that it has stood the test of time throughout the ages? People have tried to destroy the Word of God, but yet they've been unsuccessful. Why is the Word of God so important? There's several reasons. Number one, it is important because it shows the way of salvation. Jesus in John chapter 14, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Me. I don't know any other book that will tell you that. That will give you the truth of the Gospel. That Jesus is the only way of salvation. When you look in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 17, it says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich and to all that call upon Him. I love verse 13. Whosoever. Folks, whosoever means whosoever. Doesn't matter who you are in society. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are. Everything is level at the foot of the cross. 
Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? That's Isaiah 53, by the way. Who hath believed our report? So that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Folks, if people don't flock into this church, how are they going to hear the gospel? I mean, I don't see folks breaking down the back doors back there to come into church, do you? So how in the world are they going to hear the gospel? How? Tim's doing this right here. It's me. That's how they're going to hear the gospel. And if we're not willing to share the truth of this word, then we're not doing our purpose. We're not fulfilling our great commission. God's given us this blessing of being able to share the truth of His Word with those who do not know. And yet, what do we do? Oh man, I don't, I'm afraid to say what I need to say because I don't know what it's going to do at work. My boss may tell me I'm fired. Or my boss may tell me I can't do that. Or somebody may reject what I'm trying to say. Folks, it's not your responsibility to make sure that they accept it. It's your responsibility to put it out there. To get the truth to them. Their responsibility is to respond. And so, folks, it is important. The Word of God is important because it shows us the way of salvation. And we're a part of that. Isn't that awesome to know that God would have us to be a part of this great commission? Spreading His gospel? But number two, the Word of God is important to us because what joy it gives us. It brings joy to our lives. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Then drew near to him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. The Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. And he spake of this parable unto them and said, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, it he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you likewise, that joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons that need no repentance. Either one woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle, sweep the house seeking diligently till she find it? And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angel of God, or angels of God, over one sinner that, rejo- that uh, repenteth. Folks, why do we not rejoice like we should? I believe one reason is we're not getting the gospel out there. Now, when you think about this, God has called us to present the gospel. He's called us to go out and find that one that is lost. And folks, if you want to have joy like you've never experienced before other than your own salvation, you lead somebody to Jesus. And I promise you, there is joy that you will never be able to comprehend that will come into your life. Because you have fulfilled the great commission that God has called you to do and called me to do. And you realize that not only are we to rejoice, but there is joy in heaven over one person. When little Cadence came forward last Sunday to receive Jesus into her heart. The angels of heaven were rejoicing. And we were rejoicing as well. And that's what it's all about. It is when you get the gospel, the word of life to those people who need to hear, there is joy in knowing that that gospel that you present could present or could, could, uh, could bring salvation to that person. There is joy in that. The word of God is also important because it brings peace. I can think of no greater peace than knowing Jesus as my personal Savior. And folks, how do we know Jesus? We read the Word of God. He he shows us Himself in the Word of God. And it's important. The Word of God is so important because it brings peace through
through salvation. But folks, think about it like this. You ever go through a hard time? You ever go through difficult times? Times of trouble and times of trials? All of us do. What peace the Word of God gives. When you read about that Christ is our rock, Christ is our fortress, He is our deliverer, He is an ever-present help in a time of need, Man, what an awesome thing that is. And it's the Word of God that brings this peace as we read it, as we study it. When you read John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in My Word, then you are My disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We wonder so many times why we fail, why we worry, and we fret over so many things that we have absolutely no control over. Many times, I believe it is from our failure to get into the truth of God's Word and let the Word of God get into our hearts. Because His Word brings us peace. The word peace is mentioned 220 time, 229 times in the Bible and is alluded to many other times other than that. That tells me that God wants you to have peace. And peace comes in reading the Word of God. I can tell you this. People talk about, well, God wants me to be happy. God wants you to be happy in the will of God. That's what He wants you to be happy in. But I can tell you this. God wants you to have peace in every circumstance. Whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're down in the valley, He wants you to have peace. Number four. God's Word is important because... God's Word helps set us apart more holy of Himself. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You know, folks, we talk about love and joy and peace and all these things, but sometimes we don't want to talk about holiness. That's what the Word of God produces in us, by the way. When you read the Word and you make application to the Word of God, when your life doesn't line up with what the book says and your life comes in line with what the book says, I'm telling you, it helps you be more and more set apart into God and more and more holy. I remember when I was a young person, my home pastor, Brother Jack, would say, this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. Folks, I'm telling you, if you want to stay clean and pure and holy unto God, which He is calling us to do, then we've got to get in the Word of God. And I believe sometimes um, we read the book and we treat it like a meal. We take what we like and what we don't like, we push aside. You know, I remember when I was growing up, I didn't like vegetables. By the way, I love vegetables today. I love collard greens, turnip greens, uh, mustard greens. Uh, the only thing I can't handle is okra. I'm sorry, but I just can't. That slimy stuff, I just can't handle it. Folks, I, yes, amen. Some of you say amen. I hear you. Amen. We got something in common. All right. All right, now, other than Christ. Okay, uh, Christ and no um, okra. All right. But, you know, I remember mom would set a plate down. And she'd have some, I didn't even like green beans back then. I like chicken and hamburgers and meatloaf and corn dogs and hot, all those things that are so good for you, right? Uh, but I remember mom would sit down on a plate in front of me, and it'd have everything on there, all those vegetables. And I just would look, and I'd eat my meat, you know, and if it's cream potatoes, and I love cream potatoes, so I'd eat those cream potatoes. But when it got to the broccoli and all the other stuff... It would, I, I don't want to go into detail, it gagged me every time. I eat rock out like, ah, I, mean, I can't eat that. And so I would try to pick and choose what I wanted and what I didn't want. And sometimes that's the way we do about the Word of God. Brother Wayne, you've got to be kidding. You mean the Word of God tells me I've got to do this or I can't do this or I'm not supposed to do this? Man, I just said flow with me. I, I want to do what I want to do. But what we ought to be saying is, God, as you reveal to me your truth, my life's going to get in line with what the book says. That's the way we ought to be. God's Word sets us apart more and more holy unto Him. We need to listen and be obedient to what God tells us in His Word. We need not just to be a hearer of the Word, but a doer of the Word. And by the way, folks, one of the things one day we're going to be judged by is this book right here. There's no excuses when we stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. We're judged by this book. 2 Peter chapter 1, 
Verse 3. According to His divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who hath called us to glory and virtue. Where do we learn everything that pertains to life and godliness? His Word. Read it, study it, learn it, and then live by it. Make your life line up with what the Word of God says. And the last thing this morning, God's Word is important because there's no way that we can grow spiritually apart from the Word of God. There's no way we can grow spiritually apart from His Word. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his or her delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Over and over and over again, you hear people talk about how they're not being fed. Can I submit to you today, and I've mentioned this before, and I'm going to say it again, and I promise you. If, folks, if you're not being fed from the Word of God, whether it's in this place or anywhere else, it is your fault, it is my fault. If you're not being fed by the Word of God, then you are not lined up in tune with the Word of God. Because I'm telling you, Brother Tim could get up here right now, and he could read a passage of Scripture, and I promise you, I'm going to get something out of it. Why? Because it is the living Word of God. It's alive, it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I don't care if you get up here and you give a testimony. If you give the Word of God in your testimony, I'm going to get something out of it. I don't care if you stand up here and you say, read, if you read a passage of Scripture and you're just as bland as you can be, and you say something like, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Man, I'm like, yes, that is so true. Whether I'm abounding or whether I'm suffering need, I can do all things through Christ. I'm going to get something out of that. And folks, I'm telling you, we've got to the point in our society where we have to be entertained. I mean, you've got to see the preacher jumping up and down and sliding across a pew and grabbing a hold of a chandelier. And you've got to be entertained in order to get something out of it. If something is wrong with that. Listen, folks, if you're in tune with God, you're in tune with His Word. And you're going to grow spiritually no matter who's teaching or who's preaching. You're going to get something out of it because it's His Word. And your delight is in the law of the Lord. And in His law, do you meditate day and night. That's what you're going to be successful in spiritually. You're going to grow spiritually as you hear and, hinder, or as you hear and heed the Word of God. Folks, I know that I am not a, as a dynamic a preacher as some of them out there. I know that. But you know what? I know one thing. I love you. I love God's Word. I love this place. And I want to see God continue to do a work here as He is doing and has been doing. I know that much. And I know this, that we need to abide by what the Word of God says. Folks, if we cannot, and by the way, I don't care what kind of law comes up in this place or in this country, Whatever laws they put out there, if it's not in accordance with this book, we stand right here. Amen. No matter what it is. And so, we have no standard other than the Word of God. And that's what we're going to stand on. And I know you stand with me on that. And may God help us to recognize the importance of His Word. Folks, when you meet people from day to day, and you have opportunities to be able to share the truth with them, and it doesn't matter whether you're in high school like some of you ladies and guys are, or you're in college, or you're in the workplace. Wherever you go, whatever you do, never be ashamed of the Word of God because it's the power of God and salvation to everyone that believes. Everybody. Salvation is offered to everyone. And you may pass through that person, by that person, that very person that God may want you to witness to and that may, God may use what you say to speak to their hearts. And always be sensitive to God's leading in your life. Be sensitive to His Word. Stand on the truth of His Word no matter what. When everybody else seems to be going one way, you stand for God. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's all stand and bow our heads and close our eyes. No one is looking around. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to ask a couple of questions as Brother Barry and Ms. Diane come for an invitation.
folks, you know whether God's spoken to your heart or not. You know, I can't make you come forward, and I certainly would not want to do that. I cannot coerce you in any form or fashion, nor would I ever want to do that. But I'll tell you this, you know whether God's spoken to your heart about something or not. You know whether your, your life is lining up with the Word of God or whether it's not. You know whether deep down in your heart, whether your heart, you've got a relationship with God or not. You know that. And I believe, honestly, that God is speaking to hearts this morning. But there may be one here this morning who said, Brother Wayne, I really need you to pray for me because I believe God, I believe in Christ, but I really don't have the assurance of my salvation. I don't know if I die today. I don't know if Jesus were to come back today if I were to make it to heaven. I'm concerned about my soul. I'm not going to embarrass you to call your name now, but I'm concerned about my soul. I don't know whether I'm really a Christian or not. I need you to pray for me. Would you slip up your hand? By that uplifted hand, you say, please pray for me. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. One more question and we're going to pray. Maybe you're here with Sarah and Wayne. I'm really struggling with this thing about standing upon the truth. There are some situations at home or at work or in my neighborhood or wherever it may be in school that I really need the help of the Lord to stand firm upon His Word and to proclaim His truth unashamedly. I really need the prayers this morning. I need you to pray for me. Would you slip up your hand? God bless you all over the building. Wow. God bless you. Thank you for being truthful this morning. One of the hardest things to do is to say, you know, I'm failing in a certain area and I need the help of the Lord. So may the Lord bless you for being honest this morning. Father, I come in your presence once more. We're asking for your help for those who raise their hands. Lord, the Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Lord, whether it's physical needs or whether it's spiritual needs or whatever it may be, God, we know that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And God, for those who raised their hands this morning, Lord, I do that. I come boldly to the throne of grace all because of Christ, not because of myself. And Lord, I ask for you to meet this need in these folks' lives. Lord, for that one and or two who raised their hand and said they're unsure about their salvation, Lord, I pray that that would be settled today before they leave this place. I pray that you would help them to be able to come forward, that you would hinder what Satan would do in their lives, and that they would be obedient to the Word of God and to you. And so, Lord, I pray for those who may be struggling today with standing upon your truth. Lord, if there is nothing to be ashamed about coming to an altar and saying, God, I need your strength. And Lord, I need your help. So God, I pray that if you've spoken in their hearts, that they would come this morning and once and for all settle whatever it is they're battling with in their lives this morning. Be honored and glorified as we respond to your word through this invitation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.